What's up, guys? Welcome to Track World News. It's another interview with Colin Kelly. Uh, today, we have Rachel MacArthur from Colorado. Uh, Rachel, thank you so much. Again, I know we were just talking about with your crazy schedule. Um, I think, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to finally have organized it because it's been a long time coming. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's been it's been a little bit, but it, you know, life gets in the way and everything. So, um, all right, like I said, let's just get into it. Um, so, University of Colorado grad, um, previously at Villanova, hometown is Bristow, Virginia, and you know, mm -hmm. I just had to check this with you, and you went to Patriot. Um, so, let's talk about high school. Let's talk about way back. I always try to start off with: was it always running? You know, everyone always, you know, you see these phenomenons, like I've talked to Kate, I've talked to Mario, I've talked to many other people, and it's always like, was it always running? Um, for you, was it always running? Like, is it, was there a different sport? Did you switch out of it? Was your, were your parents more like, you, sh you know, you seem like a runner. Um, how, did, how did it get going for you? Yeah, if you can guess, uh, the other sport I was involved in was soccer. Mm. Uh, naturally, like every, every runner seems to have played soccer and said, oh, I was fast. Yeah. Um, and essentially same story, nothing super exciting, but I did run cross country when I was in, gosh, I want to say K through like third grade, but by cross country, I mean like a mile run at most in the grass. And so I guess that was my start um, was with running, but then I played soccer for Gosh, all my elementary school years, I was on the middle school team, which I was super proud of. And then I considered playing soccer in high school, um, but I wasn't very good at soccer. And we just decided running is simple. You don't really need much to do it. So, yeah, I switched to running. When you were like getting started with soccer and even starting with, you know, with running, was there anyone that was the person you're like, they do it? So like, I, you know, I want to do was one of your parents, someone you looked up to, I'll say. Yeah, uh, my sister, my older sister was on the soccer team with me. So she played soccer um, like a year before I did. And she was in like third grade, probably I was in second grade. Um, and so then I just joined her team. And then my family was involved. They helped coach and my younger sister played soccer. So we all mm -hmm. played soccer. Gotcha. And then so who switched over first then to running? Same. My older sister, she she's a year older than me. We're all a year apart. I have two sisters. Okay. Um, and so my older sister started running in middle school um, and she's pretty good. And I, again, I just did it because she did it. So I kind of just followed her. Was it more like, I oh, mean, I, I gotta be better than her. Like I have to, or was it just kind of like, Oh, my sister. No. Her, so. no, no, I wasn't even competitive. I would say I remember being in middle school and there was one girl who went to a rival high school who was a big deal because she would run outside of school because you had your after school practices and yeah. the school was like going on runs. And I thought that was so crazy. And I was like, I'll never do that. I'm never going to run outside of practice. Like I have a life. And so I wasn't competitive at all. Like that was not my realm. Um, honestly, I was just pretty good. Like I just, I think I have like, I had someone took it recently, the middle school mile record. And when I got that, I started feeling like, I'm sick. Like, this is so cool. Um, but it was never competitive between my sister and I, uh, really, for anything. So then what was the switch then? What was the switch that happened? Because obviously it's not an overnight thing where, you know, some people actually, you know, have that, you know, the gene that it's like you're a runner. But I mean, it, you know, your times that you're running were not just like, a, oh, yeah, you know, it's genetic. She just that's like, what was the switch that made you like, be like, you know what, this is this is something that I can see myself doing in the future in high school, college, post collegiate um, because I mean, some of these PRs, yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd rattle them off, but you would think that I'm just hyping you up, but realistically, I mean, That's 20, right. 205, um, and 8, 441, I mean, you were seven times state titleist and Gatorade track athlete. I mean, that's, you know, those are something that, you know, you don't just beat it, you know, it's like, oh yeah, you know, that was pretty good. That's something that takes a lot of hard work. So what was something that made you different than the other girls in you know the state and even in the nation at that time um you're gonna think i'm the worst for saying this but honestly i did not care like i didn't run very much in high school mm -hmm. and i think the first time i recognized that i was good and that i wanted to do more than just go to a community college and kind of stay home and not really do much in the athletic world mm -hmm. um was my sophomore year i won well in high school um yeah. like i i ran from middle school to high school because it was expected not because i was like 
gun hell about running in high school. I really wasn't. It just, it was a transition um, that occurred. But in high school, I won NXR Southeast, like my sophomore year. And it was totally not on purpose. Like it kind of just happened. And that was, I think, the first race that I was like, okay, everyone's acting like this is a really big deal, which like at the time it, it was, I suppose, because yeah. um, I made NXN for the first time ever. Um, obviously individually, I had never been on a plane before. Like that was my first plane ride was NXN like to Portland. Um, so I think that was kind of where the switch was made, where I started thinking subconsciously, like I have bigger goals and like, maybe I could pursue this further after high school. Um, but I'd say I didn't really take it super seriously until like outdoors my junior year, um, of high school. Like nothing was ever, you know, fully about running like my whole life was revolved around other things, not running until I was, yeah, 16, 17. Which, I mean, you, you say I might hate that, but at the same time, you see now these days, people just get eaten up about all of like, it, oh, I need it. Like this time is represents me. And like, if they never hit the time or they hit a bad race, it, it eats them up. And especially in high school, mm-hmm. I mean, high school, male, female, doesn't matter who you are, what age you are it can really get to you. So realistic, I think having that just like, I'm doing this because it's fun and Mm -hmm. having an outside life of running is important. So, I mean, that speaks to, I mean, I mean, I definitely don't hate that. I I wish I could have done it. I, yeah, it's it's awesome that it just came very easy to you. And, you know, I mean, hopefully it's something that you rolled into with into Villanova in Colorado. Um, Yeah. Sorry. We're going to, no, no, no. I was going to say if you got something to say. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think a lot of the reason I still run and why I did as well as I did in high school is because I really did just enjoy it. It was just fun for me. Mm-hmm. Um, nothing was super hard, quite honestly. And I think it, it was hard, like, going from that and then to college where it's honestly just not as fun. Like, everything is very stressful and you know, it's just not what it was. I, I I think the reason I'm still running now is because I just want to get back to the roots of where I really just love it. And I don't think that's necessarily like running so, so well, beating everybody, being the best. That's not what I mean by like back to where I was. I mean, like I genuinely love because I just, or sorry, I genuinely ran because I just love the sport. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas the last five years have been, I don't know if that's why I'm doing it. I think I'm just expected to. Um, so I'm really, I'm really pl- proud of that foundation of like, I just did it because it was fun, not because I felt pressure to. Yeah. Getting back to what, you know, you love and you never, you don't want to go out of running and being like, you know, the competition is something that ate me up and just even yeah. seeing, your, seeing your Instagram posts and everything, you just seem like you're having a genuinely good time, especially coming back from the injury. Yeah. It's probably all like fake because it's Instagram, yes. but yeah. No. It, hey, it happens. <laughs> Yes. As, long as, as long as it's healthy for you, that's all that matters. Yeah, no, I, I think I'm I'm pretty transparent with things. I shared a lot about my injury because it was the worst injury I've ever had. And like that might not be saying a lot because it's really the only injury I've ever had, but it was pretty bad. So I feel like I feel like I shared a lot of that. And I still am uh, if people ask me. So as long as I'm transparent, I think I'm happy. I'll be real with yourself. Um, I was going to ask you then too, like something that, you know, I said, what was the switch that happened for you? But what would you say looking back at it now? Because you've been in... You know, you were in college for five years. You competed with, you know, some of the best and against some of the best. But looking back at, like, high school when you competed and you're like, wow, this girl is running after school. That's so odd. What's the difference you see now in high school, girls and boys that you see that you, like, didn't, you were like, that's crazy. I would never expect that when I was in high school. Or, man, I wish that was, like, what I had in high school. You mean, like, what do I see now that I get similar feelings like that? Yeah, like, it's, like, it, like AAU track and field. Like, it wasn't a huge thing when, for, say, you and me were in, in high school. You know, it's mm-hmm. not, it, like, now these days, it's, like, indoor track is way bigger. Uh, summer track is way bigger. Like, is there, do you think that's, like, something you wish you saw or something, I, I guess? When I was younger? Yeah. Mm, no, a lot of people ask me if I would change things or tell myself more when I was younger and running or i I could choose to be less naive than I was. Would I be? No, not at all. I'm very glad I was sheltered and knew absolutely nothing. I think like if I had been in high school or maybe like very early high school, middle school, whatever, and been watching diamond leagues and watching world champs and all those types of things, I would have been kind of terrified. And I think 
it would have definitely prompted like some imposter syndrome very young, which a lot of athletes deal with at this age. Yeah. And I really think it would not have been beneficial for me to be little and trying to envision myself doing those things. Um, I mean, running outside of school is very different than like winning gold for the U S and a lot of people I think would look at that and say like, that's really inspirational. And yes, I agree. But at the same time, it's a little overwhelming when you are in a position that you can be there one day. Um, so I think being naive and being a little bit sheltered from how intense the sport really is, um, played well in my life. It was, it was good. I, I'm happy. I didn't know anything. Yeah. It's always sometimes good to be clueless. It's, yeah. I didn't mind it. It, it, it. You know what? It's working out for you now. So I guess, yeah. you know. um, so now let's a little fast forward to Villanova. Uh, like I said, I saw you went there for two years and you had a, you had a, a really good two years. I mean, three time national qualifier, regional cross country champ and, um, you know, big, big East medalists. Um, what was the what was the reason you want to go to Nova? Obviously, Nova is a powerhouse. It, they have been. Mm-hmm. They are. What was like? It was, was it a teammate? Was it the coaching? Was it the area? Um, yeah. What, what um, so I had I visited four different colleges when I was a senior in high school, and Villanova was the first I visited. Um, or junior in high school, I don't remember. Villanova was the first one I visited, and I think it came down to honestly like crossing out which schools I knew I didn't want to go to. And I just went down the list and Villanova was the last one standing. So I was like, okay, it's gotta be this one. But more reason than that, I was really close with the coach. I respect her and like her a lot. Um, And I still do. I did at the time. I still do. And, you know, I, I really just wanted to be coached by her. I thought it was going to be a great experience, which it was. Um, And obviously the legacy behind middle distance running there is, is pretty extreme I was an 800 runner coming out of high school I think I ran maybe three 1500s in my life because that was like for you 20s you had to um but yeah I was an 800 runner and so Villanova you know screams 800 1500 and so it just made sense that's what I wanted to do um and it's also close to my home I live six hour train ride from Villanova so that sounds far but it's really not I went to Colorado like across country so um, six hour train ride was pretty nice and I think going into college I just had never really been anywhere Um, I visited like I'd been to Colorado and I'd been on my visits elsewhere but um, I had never gone far from home so I was like I don't want to go to college far from home Mm -hmm. I'm just not prepared for that independent lifestyle quite yet Um, so it was Villanova gotcha um so when I I think going to a big school like that, because I mean, I, I like didn't do a lot of research on your high school. What was the biggest changes from like being in high school where you're, you know, you're graduating, if it's from 100, 200 kids, 300 kids to a big school like the Villanova, like on the academic side and the sports side, like what were the biggest differences from high school to college? Yeah, um, my high school is massive. <laughs> it's about 3000 kids. Wow. So yeah, not small. So Villanova honestly wasn't that big of a change because it's a private university um, and it's pretty small and campus is pretty small and condensed. Obviously, the biggest change is you're in college now. You don't go home to your family every day, um, but it wasn't anything massive. I think, I mean, they, ha- they have dining halls. They have everything provided for you. So it's not like I had to go start learning how to cook and learning how to do independent things. I didn't. I didn't have a car. I didn't have anything. Um, I think... The biggest thing that was new to me was running, obviously, like you got to run now. And I was not really used to that. I ran maybe 20, 30 miles at most in high school, um, my last two years in high school. So, you know, that was different having to practice and stuff. But in terms of like the school and classes, uh, Villanova is definitely a little bit harder with their classes. Um, I can say that because I went to Colorado afterwards and there's a huge difference. Mm-hmm. So like workloads, obviously different lifestyle is just different. Um, not extremely independent, but not where you are at home. And I can, th- I, I would say like anybody can say that going into college. So. Yeah. So then talking about going now from Villanova to Colorado, I mean, to both amazing schools. And you're also talking about how, you know, you want to be independent what other way of being independent than going from Villanova really close to home yes. all the way to Colorado? What yeah. was, the, what was the biggest thing for that transfer? I mean, where, I mean, you always want to hope it's on good terms and everything, but 
Yeah. Well, no, and, and it was, and it was a hard decision for sure. Not for reasons of I'm going to miss Villanova itself, but I'm going to miss like my coaches, my teammates. Um, but I really, like I said, I didn't want to go far from home because I wasn't ready for that level of independence. But come my sophomore year, I think I was seeing a lot more outside of the uh, East Coast bubble, mm -hmm. whether it was online, I was, you know, finally introduced to like the outside world of running and people going places and doing things. And I think I started to develop kind of like FOMO. And I was like, man, I really wish that I had a little bit more independence to do these things and to like experience running to the fullest extent, but also like life outside of school. Um, like a Villanova, I didn't run super high mileage. There's not too many places to run. They have a couple of good spots, but it's right outside Philadelphia. It's not yeah. Boulder, Colorado. Um, both have their perks, but like, I just wanted to experience the other side of things. So I think like, yeah, after my freshman year, I had doubts a little bit about the school. I was just kind of like, I don't know if it's for me. There's nothing really on paper I can write that's bad about it. It just doesn't feel like home. And that's a really hard thing to decide um, when it comes to like transferring. But yeah, I started saying like after my freshman year, oh, it's freshman year doubts, do another year. So I did another year. And then I was like, okay, it's not freshman year doubts. I think I really do seek like an independent life and to learn how to do all the things I'm going to need to do once I graduate. I don't think I'm going to learn that at Villanova. Um, and again, that's just my experience. A lot of people I know loved Villanova and that's fair. Um, but so I decided to go out West all by myself. So that was kind of a big decision for me, but I'm happy I did it. I'm glad you were talking a little bit about like, you know, kind of sound like you're talking about pros and cons. That's one of my biggest questions is, is, you know, people are always like, you know, I, I think I talked to Hannah Steelman and I, I, we said the same thing when she transferred, it's like, it's a little scary, but you know, some people are so scared that they don't do it. And then they ended up hating the school. Yeah. They at. So like talk about like some pros and cons, obviously pros for you is a lot because you, you know, love where you went. But, you know, there's some there's obviously some cons and you probably have talked you probably have seen yeah. it or talked to people about it. So, yeah, I'd say <clears throat> initially off the bat, the pros were obviously I get to go to a whole new place and start over. And that was really appealing to me. Um, and then, again, I can go on for days about how how much independence is really fostered in Colorado. You really learn to do everything by yourself. And I love that. I advocate for that for everybody going into college. Go somewhere that you can really grow on your own. Um, and that is like the number one thing about Colorado that I loved. Um, some of the cons I'd say is it was hard <laughs> running wise, got harder, a lot harder. It took me probably like a year and a half to adjust, honestly. And I was only there for three years. So it's a bummer because things started clicking once I was leaving, but I'd, I'd say the training was definitely a step up. I went from running 50 miles, 60 miles at Villanova at most um, at Colorado, the highest I ran was 90. I accidentally did hundred in the summer once. Like it just kind of happens. Um, and that was challenging at first, but I wouldn't say it's a con. I would just say like, if you're not used to it, you got to be prepared to be uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, so there's not too much I can say about cons. Um, I think that Colorado versus Villanova, the teams are very different. Um, and maybe this is a con Villanova. I really liked everybody. They were all really great to me. And Colorado, I think I dealt with a lot more challenges with some, some people on the team. And I think it's because it's a lot more, gosh, it, it's a much bigger university. So people kind of come from all over to go there. And so they, therefore there's a lot more conflict. Uh, so that was kind of fun, yeah. definitely. Um, and Villanova in terms of pros and cons, I mean, I just kind of mentioned that just, I wanted more out of college. Those are the biggest cons, pros great coaches, great team. Training was awesome. Like I ran very well. Um, I just wanted more. Yeah. I mean, you clearly ran very well. I mean, like now I, it's good to always see someone go from like, who was already a really good runner at a school, you know, sometimes transferring over, seeing a different type of coach, different type of area, different type yeah. of altitude. It could, it could get to someone and to see that you were still like all American honors, you know, national qualifier, everything like that is just, awesome to hear um i then want to get now into you know a biggest thing especially for you know runners like you just graduated um like covid how how did that affect you you know not just physically but like 
mentally and emotionally. I mean, again, now you're, you know, things seem like it was just clicking, like it's, you're just getting into a new school and everything like that. How did something like that, you know, affect you and what did Colorado do correctly for, to make you want to stay and be like, you know, I, this is the school. I'm not going to doubt that because a lot of people moved during COVID. I think my mindset with that, because I, I know a lot of people had doubts, like maybe I should transfer, maybe I should go elsewhere. Um, I'm pretty level-headed, so I was kind of like, there's a lot of external chaos going on. I don't think I need to add to it by transferring again. Also, I don't desire to. Um, like, I really thought through my decision to transfer. I didn't just do it lightly because it is a process. Like, it is stressful. It is horrendous. I never want to do that again. Mm -hmm. So that never crossed my mind um, in terms of making, not irrational, but quick decisions like that um, during the pandemic. Uh, I never really did that. I feel like I was pretty calm with whatever happened. Um, I think I'm someone who just says there's nothing I can do about this other than keep on keeping on and, yeah. you know, be as safe as I can and do everything that I'm told to do. But otherwise, like, what are you going to do? So that for me, the whole period of um, like mass shutdowns of everything, because obviously, you know, COVID is still alive and well, but uh, we had online classes for however long and I got COVID twice. I was in a hotel for like a week in hiding. Like it was horrendous, but obviously people have it a lot worse. And so looking yeah. back, I'm like, like I got it, but I was okay. Yeah. Um, but I, I kind of regret not taking more time to like focus on myself. Cause I feel like a lot of people took quarantine by themselves to really like lock down and think about how to make themselves better and I don't know stuff like that like deep stuff mm. I feel like all I did was sleep and like do nothing like I don't think there was any growth during that period which uh, I regret a little bit we were <laughs> all on pause life was on pause so it's, it's fine yeah it's I feel like yes it, it was on pause as of recent I'm seeing all this stuff these people like I I grew a lot during this time period and I'm like man I wish I did that I right. like slept yeah. more but yeah. that's about it I also was really proud that I never took a day off running when I had COVID, which is not something to like be wow. yeah. proud about, but like that's the only outcome I had. Um, but yeah, it I don't know. It was chaotic, obviously, but, you know, um, misery loves company. And I think the fact that everybody was in the same boat brought me some comfort. I'm like, it's not just me. Yeah. I don't have it the worst. I am with people, too. Like, I mean, not physically, we were quarantined, obviously, but yeah. like, I am with the whole world on this, like everyone's in the same boat. Um, so I just kind of went with the flow and did what I was told and not too much came out of that. Yeah, I mean, you gotta do, do what you could to stay above water. And I love that you have the, the mentality of like, you know, it's, oh, it can always be worse, because it could. It yeah, could which usually I would say, I am very against that. I really really am against people invalidating like their feelings of upset or whatever because someone has it worse normally I'm like no that's not fair mm -hmm. but in this situation there were people and there are people dying so like yes that is much worse and there are people suffering so in that case yes perspective is very important but if anyone listens has has problems don't say that they are not valid because someone no. else has different problems I don't believe in that I don't think that's fair so <laughs> I yeah. say that yeah, that's fine. My, my apologies. I didn't mean to say, I'm in that situation. No, you're good. You're good. I just always have to say that because I don't want people thinking like. Got to clear it up. No, I, I try not to think that way. Yeah. Um, then I, I'd love to now talk about like, you know, I want to talk about new gen a little bit because, you know, you started seeing some cameos of you and like how like all that. But I, I mean, because I like I, I've been watching new gen. I've talked to Matt. I, you know, I've been trying to get some of the guys on here. We're a little bit close now with well, track world news with them. Um, yeah. But like new gen, it's one of those things too, during COVID. I mean, I'm talking about like, you know, my personal, like, it's like, man, I had nothing to do. And watching all those videos were amazing. And then to see it still build afterwards and see how much fun you guys were having, the friendships it brought together between all these just stud runners. I mean, it was mm -hmm. so cool. I wanted to like, just, I wanted you to talk about the journey with that and how like, how random must have been when you know you just got a message like hey you want to be on this video or was it more or less like you were closer with all those people yeah no it's funny um it always makes me laugh when people say like can I talk to you about new gen because like I'm not part of it necessarily 
honestly, like, yes, I've been in some of the videos. Those are my good friends. Like, I really like those guys a lot. Um, and I knew Ben starting in high school. So I could say, like, Ben kind of kickstarted a lot of things. Um, and I grew to know, like, Matt and the rest of the crew, you know. But, um, yeah, those are just, like, my friends. And they were making their videos. And I really didn't know anything about it. Um, like, when everyone came to Boulder, for instance, the one summer, everything kind of took off. And I think that was pre no maybe post pandemic because it was problematic at times I do remember that and I think that's where I was pretty adamant about like I'm not directly affiliated like these are just my friends mm -hmm. and they wanted me to like be in some stuff or like they didn't and I was still in it like you know that kind of stuff um which it's funny because I can see from the outside perspective how that is really cool because everyone that was kind of involved in that and who is still is involved in that is usually a pretty respectable runner. Like everybody's pretty elite, I'd say. And that's how everyone sort of knows each other also. Like, obviously I'm dating Cooper. So like he's in the, he was in those videos a lot. And yeah. to me, I'm like, this isn't like a stud celebrity or anything like that. I'm like, this is, you know, at the time this is my friend and yeah. the outside eye, it's like, oh, that's sick. Like getting to watch him interact in everyday life. And I never have viewed anything like that because that's not the relationship I've ever had with these people. Mm -hmm. um, so it was cool being a part of it because it's just like if you had a friend that was like, would it be in my YouTube? And you're like, yeah, like, yeah, it's that's just fun. Funny. Yeah, you get to see it. It's fun. Um, and then, yeah, hats off to them because it did take off a lot and they're still doing very well. And like I've been in one of their recent videos, at least, um, because like, again, we're all friends and yeah. it's fun. Um, but yeah, it's neat. And a lot of kids are inspired by it, which I think is the biggest, you know, ask from it all is just that kids watch it and kids get inspired and it grows the sport in any way. Um, so I think any attention, uh, is good attention as long as it's not <laughs> mid pandemic, having yeah. people get together <laughs> and, but, uh, um, off the record, off the record, no more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, no, it, it's good. I, I think for the most part, it's good getting the young community involved like that. Yeah, I mean, that was the best part. And I talked to Matt about it. And uh, like, he was one of my first people I interviewed. And I said, mm -hmm. it was so fun to watch that because it's not like you guys are shoving these supplements and, you know, these young kids faces or, you know, and yeah. you don't have someone paying you to do this. You guys just got together. There's a couple of cameras around and it almost, felt, it almost felt like you guys didn't care for the camera. You guys are just acting up. There was literally one video. I remember it was like Cooper um was it cooper and it was just a couple of guys and they were on one of the workouts or runs and they were throwing rocks at a stop sign yeah like i was just like they're not doing this to like you know make money or anything like that you guys genuinely and then when you guys showed up to one time there was a track workout uh this was one of i can't like i said i i should know all these videos but um there was one mm -hmm. workout you guys went to a track workout with the kids and you guys gave out like t-shirts and stuff and they loved it yes. it was so yeah. cool like and that's something I was involved in because I, I really like that it involves younger kids. Um, I mean, like younger runners who are looking to get inspired. I think yeah. that's really awesome. And I think I was at Niwot High School and that was cool to just talk to the kids in person and like mm -hmm. get them involved with uh, with some of the really elite athletes um, that were there. And that was fun. And that's why I think they're doing good things. Like it's it's good that they are hands on with the with the kids and you know, involving young athletes in the sport and more so like, again, everyone for the most part in that community knows one another. Like everybody knows each other. When you're in the running world and you're at a certain level, I feel like you know everybody. And so it's really easy to just kind of be like, hey, you know me, I know you, do you want to be in my video? And I think that's awesome. Like it really shows a sense of community um, among athletes really all over, which is, which is just fun to watch and fun to be a part of and hats off again to them for that. So. Yeah. I mean, it's so cool that like our age, you know, you guys are making a huge like impact on our lives, but it's like you said earlier, it's like, we need viewership. We need help mm -hmm. in any way. And they're doing such a good job. I mean, you're doing a great job on social media. Like it's runners like you guys that we want to keep around. That's why we try to interview guys to talk about like, cause it's not an easy journey. It's not like, and overnight, mm -hmm. like, all right, yep, I got fame. I got that little check. Yeah. I got that blue check mark from Instagram. Right <laughs> I thought that was overnight. I don't know why. <laughs> okay, yeah, well, you know what I mean. You know, yes, I like, do. It's, it's so cool. I, and that's why I love, I mean, I love everything New Gen's doing. But, like, you know, you mm -hmm. can't just put it as New Gen because it's all individual. They all do so much for it. So, you know, like you said, hats off to them with everything they do. I mean, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Talking about, you know, obviously we were just talking about social media and everything with new gen and with you, I know now just obviously looking at NCAAs and everything that happened in your injury, talk about a little bit now of the injuries and how that, you know, started to take effect. Cause you said early on, this is one of your, this was one of your first and obviously biggest injuries. Like how has that been now that like post collegiate, cause it's, you know, you don't have those physical trainers, you don't have all of this, you know, support, um, you know, is this less stress now that you're out of college? Nope. Okay. Well, let me just go to the, what kind of stress yeah. does it put on you now? Um, yeah, I can dive right into this. Um, it was horrendous. When I first left Colorado, it was right after NCAAs. I mean, like from the meet, I said bye to my coaches. I was like, I'm just going to stay in Eugene. I have nothing else to do. So I, gen- I, I literally just stayed in Eugene for like mm-hmm. months. Um, and so from that point on, I was unable to run. I was unable to walk. Like my Achilles was my, I guess, problem. Um, And leading up to outdoor NCAAs, I should rather say, I hadn't run, I mean, pain-free in, gosh, a year, but I hadn't trained um, in months. Like, I think the most I could do was like maybe shuffle for 30 minutes. Usually I cross-trained. We got to the point come the end of the season where I wasn't running I was just doing workouts, half the workout on the ground, and then my easy days cross training. Mm-hmm. So it was it was pretty horrendous. And obviously, I had um, great trainers and my coaches were there for me every step of the way. But we we kind of, you know, we knew I didn't take a red shirt, um, which sort of wish I did, but I didn't. And so the pressure was sort of on to just do what we could. Um, and unfortunately, that was like, get to NCAAs, we could do that. Perform at NCAAs, probably not, which is kind of worse in my opinion. But um, yeah, it, it was bad. So I was in pretty rough shape getting to the line, um, walking across the line at the end of the race. I was in pretty bad shape. And, you know, I had all the treatment there. Everyone helped me out a lot. Um, and then that was kind of it. Like, obviously, I, I'm done with college now. And it all kind of just dawned on me. I was like, well, I'm done with college. I expected this, but physically, I cannot like move my foot I couldn't jump on my foot I couldn't move it like it was in terrible shape and it was horrendous I think I ran maybe like four months five months later like I was not running if I was running it was like I tried to go for a one mile jog and it didn't work um but so for that period of time those months it was essentially me like communicating with CU that like they were responsible because I did get injured at CU and there's like all the rules and stuff. Um, So it was us communicating back and forth. I'm in Virginia, they're in Colorado. And it's like, I need treatment. I need a trainer. Um, It's really hard to to figure that out when you're not in person. It's really hard when you don't have a masseuse that you're familiar with, that you trust. You don't have cross training options. Like I have a bike. Like you can see it back there. Like, yeah, yeah, I see it. Yeah. I have a bike, um, I have a gym, but all of a sudden I'm paying a hundred bucks a month to go to the gym, which I was like, I've never done that. Like I've never had to do that. I don't have an Ultra G. If anyone's familiar with using an Ultra G, it's like insanely expensive for like half an hour. And then it doubles for an hour. It's like, it's crazy. So I'm like, okay, that's also horrible. Um, so my trainer, I communicated a lot and like, I'm sure he had like, you know, he was probably fed up with me. I'm like, I need help. I need help. Um, but this went on for months of me, you know, getting getting minimal help from CU. And, and they did get me access to like an ultra gene stuff here. But it just felt awful. Everything was awful. It was like I would drive an hour each way to go get on an ultra gene for 30 minutes. And that went on for months. And I was paying for a lot of stuff, too. And like, it's just a mess. Leaving college was a mess because of obvious things. Mm-hmm. Um, but luckily, like things kind of started falling into place. I think I eventually took the step in saying, I'm going to just really focus in on doing every little thing right in terms of like rehab and stretching when I can. Like I, I quite literally couldn't stretch my foot. Yeah. So it was quite literally starting from like negative square one and moving forward. Um, and I started taking that really, really seriously. Um, and my agent lives nearby and he was really, really helpful as well. He um, provided me with like treatment and stuff. And I started recognizing like I can reach out to people and people want to help. And so I got help from um, people nearby, you know, other ex- experts in the sport. And that was really helpful. 
Um, so now I can say it's been almost a year since I left. Like it's been a long time, but yeah. I can say like things have calmed down. They're less stressful now, but leaving college injured when you fly across the country and are elsewhere is not fun. And you got to pay for everything. I'm like, uh, that was the worst, but um, it's not as stressful now. It's really not. So I'm happy that's done. Yeah. I mean, I've been seeing like treadmill runs, which I mean, as a yeah. person who is healthy, treadmills are a pain. So it's like good to see you're doing all that. You're not on an G all the time. Um, no, I'm running fully. Yeah, no. And it's super exciting to see that. Um, and it's, you know, it's not easy for a post-collegiate runner who doesn't get that, you know, that Nike, that Adidas, yeah. you know, that, you know, it, it's hard. And that's when you, you see a lot of, you know, really, really good runners, you know, who are at that level, the top level, who should be getting those contracts, especially. I mean, it, it's it's terrible to see that something like an injury like that could affect, you know, something like that for you. And it's more than just the physical pain. Like, yes. Don't get me wrong. Physical pain probably was at an all time 10 out of 10 for you, but it's the mental part of it saying, you know, you're going from running 60, 70, 80, 90 miles a week to not even being able to jog to your mail, get your mail on the back. Yeah. I couldn't do anything. <laughs> yeah. It so it's, it's so cool. I mean, your journey, like just hearing that little bit from, like you said, you were not even at square one, you were behind, you had to learn how to walk. I mean, yeah, it's like, I, I am grateful that like, I had people helping me. I had three injections into my Achilles, like within like five months. And that was a lot. And not to be dramatic, like I couldn't walk, I couldn't do anything, but like my foot would not bend. Like I just, like I could walk, but it just wasn't working. Like yeah. nothing, if you look at photos of me racing outdoors, like we taped it because it just provided less, I guess, stretching of the Achilles. Like, cause it just didn't work anyway. So we're like, let's just wrap it up. And like, it was really hard, but yeah, you're right. Like, obviously it was pretty painful at all times. Um, but yeah, mentally it was, it was challenging, especially when you are coming out of college and looking for that contract. It's like, you got to make the decision. Do you want to independently now keep pursuing this? Because when you're injured and you're figuring it out, you are on your own essentially. Mm -hmm. um, and I had a lot of those thoughts, like, should I even keep doing it? But I love it. So I'm like, yeah, I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> like, It's going to take a while, but. Yeah, no, it, love will prosper all. That's why I always say, if you love something, you'll figure a way through it. And that's, that's yeah. awesome. Um, if you were to give any like advice to someone who, you know, is watching this video, who is injured, who's like, you know, mm -hmm. man, like, is it even worth it? Like, yeah, you went through it and. I did. And I think that I look back at, the times I was proudest of my runs, whether it was, you know, I, I ran super well, I played super high, whatever it was, I felt good about it. And usually in those moments, I'll write it down. Like I have a, a running log, a pretty extensive one that I keep. And I write down all my thoughts and like post very happy races, I have those thoughts. And so when I'm running now, not even now, let's say when I was two months ago, trying to run again, I'm like, is it worth it? I kind of go back to those things. And I look at how great I felt in the moment when things clicked and felt good. And it kind of hits me like, yeah, it's worth it. Like you felt this way, you're going to feel this way again. And also I think for me, it's kind of like, I, I think I, I know I have a lot of potential and I'm not someone that likes the idea of not fulfilling that or at least trying to. Um, but it's hard, obviously it's hard to stay motivated. And I think a lot of injured athletes beat themselves up because they're not motivated all the time. And I can say like, I'm not, I never am I motivated every day, but you kind of get excited to just stay disciplined rather than motivated. Like I started just saying, I'm excited to stick to a routine, whether I am hopping out of bed, excited to go for my one minute run, one minute walk, or if I'm like dragging myself out of bed, it does not matter. Like stay disciplined and just ignore whatever you're thinking. If you're thinking it's not worth it, just don't care. Like, I'm sorry, just block it out. And that's kind of what I try to do. I just tell myself like, it is worth it. It is whether or not I believe that, like just speaking into existence helps me a lot. Um, but yeah, just, just focus on discipline and don't get upset when you're not motivated or like you need an easy day or something like that. Like little victories um, help a lot. And that's where the, the discipline comes in. I'm like, I did my, my run walk. That was my, 
my discipline for the day. And that's a win. That's, that's a big win. Mm -hmm. And it's like little, little things like that add up and it'll pay off. It is worth it. I can say it is worth it. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, especially like you said, starting from square one, it it really matters. Those small steps, brick by brick. I mean, Mm -hmm. I take the positives where they are. Um, so that's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Very, very inspirational. I appreciate that. Um, so I know you said you were talking about, you know, you're just getting back into running. Um, it's kind of like, you know, the, the end of you know the the hard questions or one again kind of like the fun stuff that I've I you know I got from fans and everything and um what do you have out coming up next I mean like do you have I know it's I know it's and it could be under the rug we don't have to talk about it, is. it. we don't it have is. I have well I can say I have in in my head I don't want to race until outdoors like okay. plain and simple yeah uh, a lot of people ask me like do you still ride like you just post on Instagram and <laughs> like, you're just you still ride? I love run. That. Yes, I am very, very into running. It's just physically not as much. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm finally at this is like week six. And this last week I ran like 57 miles, which I've been at 50 for like five weeks. Yeah. Um, so I'm proud of that. So I'm like getting there. Um, I'm doing some good workouts. Like I'm feeling good. I have a really good foundation. However, I do not want to race yet. Like I want to race come outdoors. Right. Um, with that being said, though, I do have a fun thing I'm doing in two months. Um, which I don't want to share it. I really don't. Cause it's not like okay. something I would usually do. It's yeah. just like me exploring my post-collegiate freedom and what I can and can't do now. Um, and dabbling in something that's completely new to me running. Mm. Uh, but I'll like maybe post about it after I do it. Like, I don't know. I don't know how it's going to go. So I'm um, doing something in two months and then I have a couple races come outdoor season that I have on my radar and I'm imagining I'll be in the shape I want to be in. Um, and that's going to put me in to some big things. Um, cause I feel good. I feel like I'm only on, you know, a good trend right now. And yeah, we'll see where that takes me. Only up from here. I mean, Hey, we're not going <laughs> to, you know, it's a secret. I, it's going to be so I, goofy. It's, it's going to be so funny. So excited, I, like, this is no. I can't wait for people to just like they're gonna make speculations. They're going to guess, and they're gonna they're gonna be like, "Is she doing a full triathlon? Is she?" No, quite honestly, I was I was talking with my agent about this the other day, and like this race that I'm doing, race, and I'm like, "Should I do it?" And he's like laughing at me. He's like, "Yeah, like why not? Like you might as well." And I'm like, "Okay, so we're gonna see. We're gonna see what happens." I'm just out. I'm just going out to prove that I have some range. I'll just say that. <laughs> There, that's the only thing again. We're done after that. No more. Yeah. No more hints. We'll see what that means. All right. Well, I mean, I'm super excited to see what you got in the two months, three months, uh, and then also in outdoor. You know, obviously, we're gonna be cheering for you. We'll be. You're, you know, was, you're a part of the team now. We're we're cheering for you, and you will be, we'll make Thank sure you. that you you got all the all our fans on top of your back. Um, I want to ask just a few just fun questions, just to like you know not yeah. just not just talk about running. So. Some of the questions that we have seen, um, I remember I posted something a while ago asking questions and I, I'm recycling a little bit of them. A lot of people have asked about the tattoos. You know, what, you know, I, I won't, we won't have to go talk about all of them, but I just, one of the ones was, you know, first one, what was it? Why? Last one you got, what was it? Why? And what's on deck? It's funny. I love when people ask about my tattoos because I find like, they either love them or they hate them. Mm-hmm. And personally, it doesn't matter because they're not theirs. They're mine. Yeah, they got but you. like you can love it, you can hate it. At the end of the day, you're thinking about me. So I guess that's oh. good. But my first one was sentimental. It's Virginia, the outline of Virginia um, on my ankle. And I actually got that when I transferred to Colorado because it was kind of my mark of like, I'm leaving the East Coast. I'm leaving home for the first time. Um, so that was the first one. And I thought it was so bold. I'm like, that's so sick. Like I have yeah. an ankle pad. Um, and then obviously like I have quite a bit. I don't even know. Um, I think after that, I got some rib tattoos. They were all kind of concealed. And those ones were also sentimental. Like I had some quotes I liked. So I took images that I thought of from the quotes and like one that my mom wrote down. I have a quote on me. Um, and then it kind of just started going <laughs> elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of people say like, what does the snake mean? And I'm like, nothing like I, I don't have a, a reason for that but everyone asks about it so I guess you know whatever yeah. um 
but yeah, I have, I think 16 or 17 uh, now. I did get one recently. This is my latest one that answers that. Mm-hmm. My last one was like, where's the camera? It's upside down. It's a rabbit. Okay. Because I used to have a bunny. Um, he was my pride and joy. I loved him very much. And he died. So I got <laughs> this tattoo Sorry. recently. No, it's like years ago. <laughs> yeah. But, um, thank you. But uh, this year, 2023, is also the year of the rabbit. And I'm a 99 baby. So like in the Chinese Lunar New Year, that's this year. Yeah. So like I love rabbits. Like I'm wearing like a rabbit charm like that Cooper got me because he's also a year of the rabbit. So that one's pretty significant to me because it's like a good luck charm slash it's my rabbit. I copied a picture of him. So mm. Yeah, some of them have meaning, some of them don't. It just kind of depends on what I like. Well, you're feeling that. I mean, if it's yeah, like you like it, it's it's and like you say, it's on your body, so who cares? I mean, yeah, I like, like it. I like the gloved gloved look. So I'll probably finish my forearms and then maybe stop. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah, no, I it, I mean that was something I always thought about too because I I have a few right here. I've I haven't like covered up, but. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's something fun. It's, I mean, it is, it is. And you cross a line when it becomes, um, when you get it in a place that's very prominent, like on my hand, there's no hiding it. So now I'm kind of like a little bit more careful with my tattoos because they've, you know, exceeded the concealed spots, like under my sleeves or something. Mm -hmm. Um, So kind of just whatever. Yeah. Um, one other question that I had, uh, oh, I have a few other questions, but another one, um, now it's going switching back a little bit into, uh, into the track world. Um, what would you say you need is we need to see more of in track? Obviously, like you said, we're, oh, we're trying to get the viewership up. I mean, this is, you know, I think track and field, I say to every person I talk to, I think we're the most like just ath- athletic people. I mean, it's, it, it, I always say one race doesn't, you know, make a person, but if you go into USA's, you can be top seed. I mean, we've seen it. No, no shade on anyone. But I mean, like someone that we we've seen was like someone like Don Frazier. We all thought he was going to go out there and win, win USA's, win worlds, and you know he had a bad race. And so, I mean, I, that's why I think people need to look, watch it more, understand it more. What do you think we need to do to kind of like up the viewership? Or something different. I think that's something a lot of people are pushing for nowadays um is seeing the other side of the athlete like you have the athlete you have this great phenomenal runner but then let's say they have a bad race and you know now you're viewing them as a person that's kind of where that occurs um and so there's this big movement into or towards looking into like their life outside of running and outside of the sport and what's this person actually about like they're a person outside of the athlete I'm against it. (laughs) I like, I think that's awesome. Like, obviously we're all people. We know that, like, you don't need to highlight it to understand that somebody is a, is a person outside of the athlete. Yeah. I am a huge advocate for looking into the athlete as an athlete. What are they doing that makes them so good? I'm like, I want to know, I'd be really interested as someone who let's say was like, let's say I was a way worse runner than I am. And I'm watching someone I really admire. Mm. I understand they're a person outside of the sport. I can totally get that. I want to see what they're doing that makes them, you know, the great athlete that they are. So I think it it would be awesome to learn more about that kind of stuff. Like, you know, athletes get better because they learn from other people and, you know, they get to see what other people do and they learn new tricks, learn new stuff, whatever. But it's like, unless you're at the same level or close to those top tier athletes, you don't get to find that stuff out. Like I've seen a lot of really cool stuff from very high level athletes that like I wouldn't have gotten to see if I wasn't, you know, a good NCAA runner, let's say. And I'm like, I think that stuff needs to be more public. Like there's no secrets. Like let's not be sneaky. Yeah. Let's share what we're doing that works. I think that would be awesome. Um, Not to say like, forget that you're a person, but like show us that you're a person that does cool stuff <laughs> that makes you this athlete. I think that would be neat. And maybe that's a hot take because it's like dehumanizing, but like, it's not, like, it's cool. Uh, well, yeah. I was going to say it's not definitely not dehumanizing, but no, yeah. I, I think you're right. I mean, it, it, it's almost like we're shown all the time, you know, the greatest athletes, they have always had it. They owe like, you know, and you will, we'll go, we'll get those like, 
you know, those documentaries on like their life outside of it, which yeah, is cool. and I think it's awesome. I think it's awesome. However, I genuinely am like, yeah. unless you're my friend, I kind of just want to see like what you're doing to like be so good. I don't really care that you like to read. I'm sorry, not to be mean. I'm just like, I, I get, I get it. <laughs> I like, you know, but that's just, maybe that's just me. And I just want to learn as much as I can from athletes that are obviously very good. So I think that's, that's cool. Yeah. I mean, like you said, we're trying to grow it. I mean, the water rises. It doesn't matter what kind of water it is. If the boat floats. I mean, if exactly. You, I mean, if, if it's working for you, maybe it'll work for me. What are you doing? Exactly. That like, why sure. am I struggling? Yeah, why am I struggling? You're not like I got to understand that. No, yeah, I, and that's the real that. side of the athlete. When you can share that stuff and you can, you know, be vulnerable with what works, what doesn't, and help other people. Like, that's a human part. I I enjoy that side of things. Nice. That's definitely. Definitely. I agree. I, I never even thought about it that way. Like, yeah, I love seeing what, you know, Cooper's doing like, uh, you know, like when you I guys, see it anyways. I see it anyways. And like, listen, yeah. just tell me what you're doing. Let me see the, let me see the run log real quick. Yeah. Um, so something that Cage Flash, you said that, you know, has always has been resonating with me since like the, the interview we had was something about jerseys. Jerseys? Every, yes. Jerseys. Like, Nike has the same well, singlet, I'll say, sorry for some, you know, the people that don't, you know, we see, we, you hear it as a track alley, you say singlet, but you know, um, so, you know, Nike has the same, you know, all Nike athletes have the same singlet, uh, Adidas here and there. Would you want to see something more personalized? Like, you know, kind of how basketball and football have a number, obviously I don't know about a number, but like having like your last name on it, make it a little more personal. So if, you know, a runner who is watching, Rachel MacArthur run and just be like, wow, like she, like, I love her. I want something that's more personalized to her. I'm not going to go buy a $150, you know, Nike singlet that she wears. That's not hers. I want something that says something that's like her name, or do you think that's a little overkill? Um, I'm against it. Okay. I, I think it's cool. Yeah. But um, personally, I think that instead of that so you're saying like customize your branded jersey mm -hmm. um that's just money to the big company let's not do it let's okay. do instead you can have small sponsorships with the big sponsorships let's say you're with nike i don't know and you mm -hmm. want to be sponsored by some other random little company that wants to put a patch on your jersey i think it should be allowed someone watching says i like that i want it they're now investing in this little company. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about the financial side of things. Like, let's do that. Let's give other people an opportunity to represent an athlete. Or for instance, I have my Artican bracelets. I love Artican. They're a great company. And there's some that I've designed. Yeah. Um, and I wear. And that's cool. I feel like I've seen a lot of big athletes running who have a cool accessory. And I'm like, I like that. I want to get it. And I can invest in that. I like the more... The, the accessories side of things, jerseys, singlets. Yes. Yeah. But like your brain is getting their money. Your brand is okay. Let's give you maybe like your patch where you can make some money individually or like your small brand can make some money individually and people can affordably invest in that. Yeah. Cause like, let's, let's be realistic. You personalize your Jersey. You have your Nike singlet with your name on the back. You think you're going to buy that for, or someone's going to buy that for less than $200 no yeah. like that's not going to happen so realistically i think that there should be little things that athletes can do and wear and which some can mm -hmm. um you know and maybe that can hit a little closer to home for some people and they can invest in it like that kind of stuff i think is fun yeah i mean it's it's one of those things that you want to make it you personalize and i think it'd be cool to have something like your local running company that you want to support or something that like a cause yeah. whatever it may be yeah I agree and like I don't even know like the financial side of things how that would actually work out but I can imagine you know it's money to someone else and it's money to you and it's not even about the money it's like little things that are a lot more personable than you know your whole singlet mm -hmm. um plus I kind of like the designs of like most big company singlets oh yeah that's how I can point out who's on what or who's branded by what, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I like that, but I think it's a, it's a hot take. It's a cool take. A lot of people talk about personalized singlets and yeah, 
I don't know if it'll happen, but like maybe. Maybe. I don't know. You know, those big companies will make their money, like you said, one way or the other. Um, yes, they're going to be okay. Yeah. Um, you know, people always talk about like why they love running. Like obviously we have so many like pauses about running. What is your biggest ick about running? Biggest track ick? And, yeah, track and field, cross country, whatever it may be. What is your biggest ick? Biggest ick? Like I'm watching someone? Take it however way you want. So for you. <laughs> I love talking about icks. Um, Gosh, I, I find it so icky when in cross country specifically – they run by you. Just anybody in the race runs by you, like right there. Yeah. It's something in my head. It's so uncomfortable because like cross country, you're, you're going fast, but you're not like flying. Mm -hmm. And it's so uncomfortable for me to like watch other people, like just running by me, looking so tired. I'm on the other side, like feeling fine. I don't know what it is, but I stand there and I watch and I'm like, yikes. Like, yeah. I hate it. I yeah. hate it. I don't, I don't know. Like the sweat, the spit, whatever. And I get like, I'm in the same positions but I find myself gross when I'm doing that. And I'm like, Oh, these spectators are watching. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of like when you're getting the pity clap at the end of a race and that person's okay. going by you. Oh. That's the pace I'm viewing everybody at. I'm like, just watching like, yay. And I you got this. The, the, you just keep going. You're almost there. The, oh. I, yes. Oh gosh. You can imagine what I was like when Cooper was finishing NCAAs cross country. That. Following, and I'm like, Oh, like I'm just gonna try to support, <laughs> but I'm, like, I'm gonna support you facing the other direction. I can't watch it. I like I can't do it. I don't know. It's the struggle. Mm -hmm. It's if anyone is familiar, it's Mr. Struggle watching it. I can't. <laughs> I don't like it. Yeah, it's like you think to yourself because we all have had that. Like, oh, why am I doing this? But then you're watching them, and you're just like you watch yeah. them, but you're like, this kid is literally dying, and I don't I know what to know. do. That's so mean, but I'm like. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah I don't watch. yeah if that's an ick then that's the ick that I mean, that's that's the ick and i agree that i had i have the same ick as as you then um let's do let's do uh, this this was a fun one because it really had to make you think and we can we can we can end it with this one because it's always fun i think i want to end it this one if you were watching the olympics and you had to take away one event Whatever it is in any and anything, just track and field though. Obviously, I don't want to say take away basketball, but mm -hmm. just track and field, you want to take something away, take an event away, but you can then replace it with an event that you want. Um, what would you say? I just for reference, uh Cade Flat took out the I think it was 20, I think it's 20k race walk and yeah. put in he put in the 1k. 1k race walk? No, no, no just the just a 1k. Oh, like, just a one k. I was like, yeah, hmm. yeah, no. Um, I agree. I would take out. I would take out the long, long race walk. I was gonna say ten k, but then I was like, wait, there's definitely longer things than that. Yeah. So the twenty k race walk. Okay, take that out. Get rid of it. I mean, like, you know, it's kudos impressive. to whoever yeah. does it. Absolutely. No. There's no way to make that sound better. Yeah, get rid of it. Scratch it. Okay. Um, gosh, I would put in a. Um, triathlon on the track triathlon <laughs> on the track we're putting a pool on the home straight on both sides 100 meters you gotta swim it um stationary bikes on the curves but like that move really slow Gosh. and then 100 meter dash yeah so like a triathlon but condensed so like not even like a half triathlon like yeah. uh, like a, a, so you gotta do it a ton of times oh it my. all adds up Gosh, yeah, no, that is. I mean, you're definitely thinking outside the box there. I just I, made that up on the spot, but I that is that's so crazy and unique. I, I would, like but I would watch it. I mean, right. I'd definitely be so chaotic. I'm watching the marathon. I'm watching a 10k. Why would I not watch a triathlon? Not outside. Yeah. On the track, like if you said that, I'd be like, how? That's what. That's my mindset. I feel like anyone would say that. Right. How? I feel like that would be fun, at least the first go around. It's either that or like a regular, like a mile, let's say a mile, but with all not athletes, like people just got like drawn from a raffle mm. and they'll have to race the mile now at the Olympics. That's something that people, you know, people always say that they say it's almost like the Hunger Games kind of thing. Like take That's one it. random person. Yeah. Because everyone's like, oh, you, uh, you're watching it. Like, I can do that. Like, are you kidding yeah. me? Take one random person, no matter where, like, 
what country it may be and put them in a hundred meter depth or 400 and see how hard it actually right. is. Okay? I think it'd be so fun to watch. Like, oh, yeah. stuff like that. especially like for someone that like, you know, who would probably be there competing in it. You're just like, yeah, exactly. I told you this is not yeah, that. I think it's fun. You want to be inclusive, include the NARPs of the world. And <laughs> there you go. I love that. No, I definitely love that. I thought no, it'd be on the spot, so that sounds fun. That is the best. That's I've I've asked actually people after the interview, like even like my co-host Colin, and he that is a great answer. Love that. Thank you. Um, I think that's a great place to end it. Um, I you know thank you so much. This was really really fun. I know we've been having like I said, it's been hard to get together. I'm so happy we did. Um, like I said yeah. before, good luck with the journey. I hope it keeps going. You're climbing, and I'm loving it. Um, we're always going to support you, even in your mysterious, you know, race, whatever it may be. <laughs> yeah, you're going to laugh at it, but we'll we'll be we'll still be cheering for you. We'll we'll Thank if you, you want it, whatever you need from us, we got it. Uh, uh, if you have anything else you want to say to anyone who's watching, if it's a message, if it's a, whatever it is. No, not really. I mean, I love doing podcasts, and I love you know, sharing my side of things. And I love when people ask me questions more than anything. So like if people listen and want to ask me anything about anything, I know I told you at the beginning of this episode, like I'm horrible at checking my messages, but I do see if I have a notification. So like I'll get to it eventually. And, you know, I, I enjoy interacting with people and when I can, I will. So. Yeah, yeah, no. And if it ever comes up, we might even do, we're thinking about doing some special guests sometimes whenever like NCAA comes around. So if you're ever, if you ever want to do some, if you ever have some picks, you know, you have some special picks for NCAAs, we're always looking for people to help out. So, um, yeah. so hopefully it's not the last time, but again, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. It was fun. Yep. All right, guys, we appreciate you guys watching and we'll see you soon.